So I accidentally built another app and I tried really hard not to build this one, but enough people have asked me to do it. So here we are. If you're new here, welcome to the video. My name is Chris and I build productivity apps. This is the fifth app that I'm building. Long story short, I got invited to a podcast and the host asked me to bring an app that we could workshop together. So I came up with this idea, worked on it for a little bit before the podcast and it was supposed to end there. But I've decided to keep it going and actually document it on YouTube through this series because I'm learning a lot and I think there's a lot of cool stuff that I can share that would probably be interesting to you guys. Today we're gonna be covering things like how I came up with the idea, how I lightly validated it, how I came up with some of the branding and where we're at with the MVP. If you've been following along, you know I've also been working on another app called Lily and I'm sure a lot of you are wondering what happened to it. If you stick around until the end, there's a short segment covering what's going on with it. But switching gears back to this app, again, I was asked to bring a business idea to this podcast just so I can workshop it live with the host. The way that I come up with app ideas is I look at my own life and try to look at the pain points or things that I find annoying. One annoying thing I was dealing with at the time was I could not answer the question, what subscriptions are we paying for as a business? that easily. You're probably thinking, okay, why don't you just use Rocket Money or QuickBooks or doesn't your bank have something to show you what your subscriptions are? It's actually not that simple. There's a lot of stuff on the consumer side. So like Rocket Money or your budgeting app can probably do that. But on the business side, there are really not that many services that can do this accurately. So if you're using something like QuickBooks or Mercury, which is a bank that I use that has a feature like this, it typically only identifies like 5% of the subscriptions. Okay, well, can't you just throw your bank statements into ChatGPT and ask it to pull out the subscriptions? You could sort of do this and that is actually how I have been dealing with this problem. But in my experience, it's only able to identify like half of the subscriptions for some reason. This seems like a really simple problem that AI should be able to tackle, but for some reason, it just isn't. It's probably a combination of there's just a ton of data for the AI to comb through, and then there's a lot of edge cases to deal with, but it's just not that good, and there really are no good tools on the market. So that's the problem that I wanted to solve for myself and that I was gonna bring to this podcast to workshop. Can I build an app that will help businesses answer that question, what subscriptions are we paying for? for very, very accurately. To prepare for the podcast, I started working on this idea. So I put together a quick MVP. I put together some branding and I started posting on my Twitter and my Instagram and making short form content, documenting some of the stuff that I was doing. And something surprised me, which was that people started reaching out saying, hey, I'm a business owner too. Let me know when this is live because I would actually pay for this and use this in my business, which kind of surprised me because I knew that this was a problem that I had, but I wasn't fully confident that this was a problem that other people were facing. So this was a really good signal to see. Once I started hearing stuff like that, I thought, okay, maybe there's something here. And then I started doing a little bit of market research. Conclusion that I came to is there really isn't anyone doing this that well. And there actually is not that much competition, which sounds really good at first because great, there's no competition. I should easily be able to take over this market. But when you step back and think about it, having no competition is usually actually a red flag. Maybe there's a reason that nobody pursues this market. So I did even more research to figure out why does something like this not exist? And the conclusions that I came to were there really just is no money in this. This is a really small problem problem. And more importantly, there are probably not a lot of companies that are willing to pay money to solve this problem. Subscription analysis for business is usually just a small feature of an existing product like QuickBooks or Mercury. It's just one of those features they have to have on paper to get customers because everyone else has it. But again, it's too small of a market for a standalone business to exist. The next reason I came up with is that this is a very hard problem to solve without having AI. So it makes sense why no solution has really come on the market because in my opinion, AI has only gotten to the point where it's good and cheap enough now to be worth pointing at such a small problem like this. So now that it's worth it, I think there are going to be solutions like the one I'm building and some other people are probably going to tackle this because the technology is available and cheap enough to be applied. So it's kind of like a right timing kind of thing. I think this is the right time for something like this to be done effectively. But I think the first problem is honestly the bigger reason it doesn't exist. It's just not worth it for businesses to do this. If I had to estimate, I think that this is probably a 30 to $50,000 a month kind of problem, which sounds like a lot of money. But when you think about it in the context, text of a business, that's actually not a whole lot. That would probably barely cover your payroll if you have like two engineers at your company. So it makes sense why no businesses are pursuing this, but 30 to 50K for a solo developer is more than enough. And again, the 30 to 50K is kind of a ceiling. Like this is probably the peak you can do as a solo developer pursuing this idea. Realistically think I can get this thing to five to 10K a month in revenue if I just build on this for a year straight and I put in a little bit of time each week into it. So doing a little bit of napkin math and that light market analysis, that's when I decided, okay, there is something actually viable for me as a solo developer to build here. This is a place where I can definitely create value because the existing solutions are just not good. And I think that I can market effectively because there really is 
isn't that much competition. And this is usually the thought that goes into my head and the process that I use when trying to figure out if I should pursue an app idea or not. Once I decided that the idea was worth pursuing, I decided to build something tangible really fast. I had this vision in my head that I wanted a calendar where I can see all of my subscriptions laid out, then a big number showing how much am I spending each month in subscriptions. So I fired up Claude Code and in about 48 hours, I got a working prototype up. It's a very simple app where you can actually connect your bank accounts through Plaid. It's gonna pull the bank transactions and it's gonna use AI to figure out what subscriptions do you have? And it actually only took a little over 100 prompts to get to this point, which I actually documented on a notion here just for the sake of the podcast. It's kind of interesting to see that 26 of the prompts were used for actual feature development, 38 were iterating on the design, around 20% were fixes and errors, and then there was just some other things where I was asking questions of the code base. I'll probably cover more about the technicals and building in another video in this series, but in terms of the tech stack, I'm actually using something called Remix for the front end, Convex for the database, and clerk for authentication. This is actually deviating from the normal stack I use, which is either Firebase or Superbase and just vanilla React. But it's because for any new project, I love to try new technologies if possible. I've never used Remix, I've never used Convex, I've never used Clerk, but I'd heard a lot about these technologies and I've been looking for an excuse to try them. So we'll see how this plays out. I'll probably make a whole video about the tech stack and if it's working and what I'm learning here. Then we're actually using Plaid to power the banking stuff so users can link their accounts and it'll pull in subscriptions. But I will actually support the ability for people to not use that and then just upload bank statements through PDF. So once I got the MVP out, I realized that was pretty easy. I got a little extra time. Let's actually work on the branding and the mascot for this thing. So if you know my apps, they always have to have some sort of mascot because I really feel like it adds some character to the app. If you look at my app Luna, which is a budgeting app and Lily, they do have these mascots and I feel like it really makes them a lot more memorable. I will cover this in a whole separate video about branding, how I came up with the mascot, how I think about stuff like this. Long story short, as I decided to name it Subscription Monster, and this is the app mascot that we came up with. It's kind of like this abominable snowman creature. I was thinking about subscriptions and business finance, and I realized it's kind of this monster that no one really wants to look at or think about, but it's always there. And so I thought it'd be fun to have a mascot, which is this monster, but instead of it being this scary thing, it's actually this really helpful monster that's there to help you answer these questions about your business. Once we had the MVP and this nice branding, I decided to take a screenshot and throw up a landing page. If you've been following me for a while, you know that that's my recommendation for anyone building is to get a landing page up as soon as possible because you want to start collecting emails emails because then you have a list of testers that you can ask for advice and then get to use your product early on so you can start iterating. I got this landing page up and I actually tweeted it out and I was surprised that around 30 people actually signed up for this wait list. So that's where we're at right now. We have the rough MVP which I am furiously trying to get to beta ready so that I can onboard the first set of users. We got a mascot and branding and we have a landing page. I want to document launching this thing, getting the first couple of users, getting the first revenue. I want to try to show as much of the process for you guys as possible. If there's something specific you want me to cover, please comment below and I will try my best to include it in this series, but very, very excited to take you guys along with me here. Before I close out the video, I wanted to address what is going on with my app, Lily. That was an AI meeting assistant app that I was working on a couple months ago that actually had a lot of traction. There's like 2000 people on the wait list for this thing now. What happened to it? Why have I not been posting videos about it? Basically, the project has been put on pause and there's two main reasons for this. Number one is as I started building the MVP and getting beta testers for it, I realized that the unit economic economics of this product were not that great. What I meant by that is in my actual usage, it was costing like 20 to $30 a month for me to just run it on my own account. And the problem with that, to make this viable, I'd probably have to charge around $50 a month for the app to remain profitable, which makes no sense because there are a lot of these AI note-taking apps and these meeting assistant apps that are at way lower price points. When I did a little bit of research, I came to two conclusions. One is that a lot of these apps are just losing money. Most of them have raised VC money, so I do think that they're running at a loss, which is something that I can't do because I'm paying for this myself or they actually have a lot of really good engineers and have spent a lot of time optimizing to get their costs down, which I unfortunately could not afford to do at this time. So the reason number one I'm waiting is I wanna see what happens in the AI field. There's a bunch of new models that are coming out all the time and the costs are actually going down even since making the video. The second big reason is as I was building this app, I came across an app called Granola, which I'm sure a lot of people have heard about. One thing that's important to me is I only build apps if I really think that I can do it 
better than the next best thing. And after studying granola, they have a really world-class product and there was not really much that I can add that could be better than what they have right now. They did raise a ton of money though, so I'm waiting to see what happens to the product and there's a clear path for Lily to be better than granola, then I'll probably jump back into it. I am particularly interested in some of the improvements with local AI models. So that is something I'm gonna be experimenting with soon because some of that stuff actually might be feasible and that could be a huge improvement over something like granola. So I'm playing the waiting game right now to see how things shape up in the space and with granola. And if something changes and I decide to pick it back up, you guys will be the first to know. So that's what's going on with Lily. That's what's going on with my new app, Subscription Monster. Very excited for this series. Thank you guys so much for following along. If you like this content, check out my Instagram and TikTok. I post almost every other day about building productivity apps. And obviously if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.